Did um, we present it in the form of a bigger idea? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That it's, that it's not just this one idea, we just need to make this. I would like us to have a vision of what we want the downtown to look like. The first, thing, the first rule to get in there is you have to figure out where, you, where you're going. I want us to have a vision of the downtown, decide what it is we want it to be, and then let's start working to get in there. Mm -hmm. It needs to, um, it's not any different than what Greenville did, and I think we're probably all in agreement that what we love about Newberry is that it's small and wonderful and we don't wish to be Greenville. However, the way they did their development uh, is something to be considered. And the first thing they did was came up with like five steps of what they want it to be. And they did it all in 20 years, mm -hmm. which sounds like a very long time, except Blue Moon's been here nine. Mm -hmm. We would have been halfway through. So it's, it's, if we just get a vision and then start working towards somewhere and it eventually will pull all of these ideas together, all the events and everything, if they're all working together, we're going to get where we want to be. Mm -hmm. You might want to talk to the people in Spartanburg because years ago Spartanburg um, took their main street and made it one way. And I don't know, I was away from there, I, I was away from the mood at that point. But at some point they switched it back. And now it's two ways. I don't know what the problem was they had, but they could probably tell you, you know, why and what the negatives were and why they switched it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in where I was headed, kind of describing the project, at least our, our discussions with the council and, and the DOT, and we'll check on that, is that we, you know, we spent the spring working with the council to get the money budgeted. I mean, the first step was you got to have the money. The second step was, okay, well, we don't own the property. What is the property owner going to allow us to do? So we dealt with the DOT. And that was pretty lengthy. I mean, Matt can tell you about it because he did a lot of the, uh, the interaction with them. What DOT has said all these years is because the city has the side-mounted traffic signals. And they look great. I mean, they're really appropriately scaled for this tight main street we have with the very tight turning radiuses, is that you can't plant trees because they've got this federal standard where they have to have two, we have to have 215 feet of sight distance to each signal. And so what I did is I got an aerial photo. I used to do uh, GIS stuff, so I just kind of took this aerial map and I drove basically, okay, well, your driver's sitting here. Their view of the signals is not this. It's not the width of the street all the way down, 215 feet. It's a cone. And then going the opposite way, you got another cone. Well, the space that those two, co the two cones do not intersect, which would be at the center of the blocks, and if you're looking at it from above, couldn't we plant trees in those, keep the current signals? And they've come back and said no. And, you know, our largest, well, not counting above Lindsay Street, because that's not a standard city block, because you go all the way from Lindsay mm -hmm. up to... The, the two side streets and then the Calhoun, which is your na next major intersection, is Caldwell to College, the old ho this block. And that's 210 feet long. So, I mean, the 215 feet of sight distance would not permit any trees. And that's what the DOT came back with. And I, I think, you know, they're, they're very risk averse. And they said, you know, no, you, you keep the current signals, you're not planting any trees. Um, I know trees are not a silver bullet, but I don't know that I've been to a successful downtown that didn't have trees. I mean, I, you know, it's just, you know, it might not be why they're successful, but it's an ingredient they've got. So one thing we looked at is what can we do with the traffic signaling? And I mean, this goes back, you know, I remember this the first few months I was working with the city. What can we do to get trees on Main Street? Well, is to replace the signals. And um, the, the challenge with that, though, is these are basically really beefy poles. You'd probably go with fluted poles like we've got. So it's got the flutes in it, it's got the shroud at the bottom. They're very big. The footing form is four foot by four foot by four foot of concrete. I mean, these are major things. They've got an arm and then you've got the two signals mounted to them that hang over the street. To do the three intersections downtown, which would be Caldwell, College, and then Lindsay, is $250,000. Um, and it may be that, that we need to go back to the council and we need to, need to say, hey, you know, our assets in the, on the government side and the utility side, cash-wise, are earning 0.02% right now. I mean, our money is not yielding very much. Those signals will last 20 to 30 years. You know, a lot of us won't be working, you know, in 20 to 30 years. So it's like a one-time expenditure. Do we want to appropriate some fund balance for the signals as opposed to eating into the money that we've got for the streetscape project? Because what I, I would like to do and get y'all's reaction to this is what if we took that 250 in, of the streetscaping money that we we're going to spend on the signals and put it to uh, a facade grant program. And then that money could be used to, um, you know, for <coughs> all, uh, buildings that have been painted to repaint those buildings, for buildings that need new awnings, <coughs> don't have awnings, 
to install awnings. I mean, basically, they would be cosmetic repairs to the buildings. Because uh, I know some of what was done, like in the late 90s, it hasn't been revisited. And, uh, you know, a second round of cosmetic improvements downtown could, you know, create a, a different picture when you drive main, down Main Street. Um, you know, if, if we went back to the council and got them to appropriate some more money so we could do the signals, you could do signals, trees, planters, benches, receptacles, and facade improvements. And I would hope going forward, it couldn't be funded at that level, but maybe we could, we could identify $50,000, let's say, I mean, that's just a hypothetical number, to $100,000 a year for a, a pool that the building owners downtown could essentially compete for because, I mean, you may have requests that exceed the amount of money each year, and a scoring system would have to be developed. You know, what improvements were the most desirable, and, uh, you know, grant applications would <coughs> be submitted, and then those with the highest scores would, would you know, be awarded the money. But I don't think that, that it would be, given the number of buildings we have downtown, enough money to where you could do, uh, like, stabilization or weatherization of buildings but you could do cosmetic repairs on them. And um, so that, that's, a, that's a concept, I guess, this summer that, that I talked to the council with. And, you know, initially, it's not something we've done. So, I mean, you know, uh, they were concerned about it. But I think it's something that they're, that they're open to now. If they don't budget more money so that we can do the signals, and all we've got to work with is the 586, one thing we could look at doing if we want facade improvements and trees is Lindsay Street right now, and I don't know if y'all are going to like this, but Lindsay Street right now has 83 cars that either pull off of Main Street onto Lindsay or pull off of Lindsay onto Main, turn left or right. We could, and DOT has said that, that uh, at least initially they said that's something we could do. We could take the signals off of Lindsay Street. We could put a stop sign on Lindsay so that, you know, it wouldn't impede the flow of traffic on Main Street, but it would stop people on Lindsay trying to turn left or right onto Main. We could plant trees essentially from Robert Lake's law office up to Young Life, you know, moving east, and then do the, use the signal money that we had budgeted, the traffic signal money, to do facade improvements. And it may be when you get down to the 1200 and the 1300 block, the, the, these two blocks here, where you don't have trees, you could probably do some kind of like topiary evergreens and some pots, you know, just to kind of create some greenery. And you might even be able to do some more extensive awnings. I know, like, for instance, the awning. Here and then on Glenn's building, I mean, it, it juts out from the building, projects pretty far. And, uh, you know, it could be awnings, might, maybe not quite that extensive, but maybe that project a little farther out than the awnings up Main Street. Because you may have conflicts with trees. I mean, so you're not going to have them, you know, out to the joint between the curb and the sidewalk. Um, but, you know, that was a concept. And some of the feedback I got in, in my, my visits on Main Street were, were, you know, fairly positive about it. I mean, we'd have to flesh all that out. But that would but be a, you can have an awning out to the street. I, I think we have to be careful with that. I, I'd, I'd like to do it in a way where you know the highway department is not directly involved in awnings because they've not been reviewing. <coughs> they've not not been viewing these awnings as encroachments on their right of way. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't That's pass the architectural not. review board. Yeah. Mm. Arb. <laughs> Arb. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, you mean awnings that uh, that project it out? No, I, I think I think they're gonna, well, I think they're going to be more concerned about um, the materials. You know, they're not going to want, preferably, not have metal awnings, and uh, you know, if they can get cloth, that they're probably going to want that as opposed to vinyl. But I don't know that they're necessarily going to get into the dimensions of them. Yeah, hmm. um, I know it looks pretty sure to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Charlie Barrett. Uh, Greenwood did the side. Hear me? I don't know where they got the money from. It might have been a grant, but. Uh, they gave twenty thousand dollars to each building owner to redo their design, and then the building owner had to put ten percent in. So they had to put two thousand in. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone took a lot on the deal, and it was on the back side of uh, Main Street. So they were trying to clean up that. Okay. So I mean, twenty thousand, you know, you might could open up some of the windows. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And, 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 and I tell you, going forward, absolutely, this initial blitz, and we might do the matching requirement on the initial blitz, but I think the recurring money I mentioned from year to year for facade improvements, I think there does need to be a match there. 